Welcome to Beat Source Tech. My name is Mojax and I have a highly anticipated video for you today. This is my long term review of the new generation of DJ cartridges from Gico in Japan. I know some of you think this video is rather overdue, but it's actually been in the works even longer than you might realise. Back in 2021, Gico sent me their J44 cartridges, direct replacements for the then discontinued Shaw M44 carts. They were cool, and I'll come back to them later. Attached to them were their regular N44 stylus replacements, which I've basically reviewed twice already. Now, I liked those earlier styly. They were, in my opinion, the best N44 alternatives on the market at that point, and I was happy using them. But they also included one extra stylus, a prototype, and asked me for my feedback on it. That turned out to be an early version of what I'm reviewing today, what they call the N44-7 DJ Improved Nude. And to be honest, I felt like that was such a big improvement that I didn't want to review the carts until I had production versions of those nude styli to use with them. Why nude? Well, if you didn't watch my Autophon Elite review in which I discussed that tech, let me break it down. A typical DJ stylus has a bonded construction. At the end of the cantilever is a metal shank, which then has a diamond tip bonded onto it. With a nude stylus, there is no shank. The entire stylus is made of a whole diamond. The theory goes that the metal shank in a bonded assembly increases the mass of the stylus and therefore reduces the overall responsiveness of the stylus to transients. So a nude stylus will generally sound better than a bonded one. It also means that the stylus should last longer, there's more diamond to wear out and tracking should be improved as it digs deeper into the groove. Are there any disadvantages to a nude stylus? Well, only one really, cost. They typically cost more to produce than a bonded stylus, mainly because diamonds are, you know, expensive. And we'll come back to pricing towards the end of this video. I'm talking about the stylus first because both types of cart which Gico sent me use the same one, that N44-7 DJ Improved Nude. They do also offer an N44G version which, like the Shaw original, should offer a smoother, more refined sound, but I haven't tested the nude version of that one. I've tested the N447 Styli in both Gico cart varieties and in original Shaw cartridges, and I have to say they are very impressive indeed. When it comes to tracking, they're absolutely superb, whether back queuing or scratching, as good as anything else I've tried from any brand. Gico have worked really hard to closely replicate the exact cantilever shape that was found on the OG M44-7s, and that's reflected in their cutting performance. Weighted correctly, they don't appear to cause any issues with Q-burn and the like either. I've been playing 45 sets with them for many months now, and I haven't noticed any problems with excessive record wear whatsoever. Speaking of weight, they are designed to track at slightly higher levels than the Shaw Originals, 3.5 to 4.5 grams, and I typically set them to 4. You wouldn't know it from watching how a lot of DJs used them over the years, but the original N44-7 Styli were only supposed to be run at 1.5 to 3 grams, so that means that the cantilevers and suspension on the new Gcos are definitely slightly different, but as with the newer generation of Autophon carts, I like that. These are designed to work best with how DJs typically balance their arms, and there's less chance of catastrophically overweighting them by mistake. We'll come back to how they sound with the new Impact carts, but with the J44-7 carts and OG Shores, they offer a sound profile very similar to an original N44-7 stylus. If anything, they seem a touch more agile in the upper mids and treble, as you might expect from a nude stylus, but any difference is pretty marginal. I can't play you vinyl samples in this video for copyright reasons, but I'll link to some lossless recordings in the description so you can download those later and listen to them for yourself. I can't promise they'll be up forever, but I'll do my best. To wrap up on the styly, there is no question that the N44-7 improved nudes are the best choice for replacing your worn-out original shores that are on the market today. And if you need cartridges to go with them and the M44-7 sound is what you're after, then the J44-A7 carts are also an excellent choice. They are an almost perfect recreation of the originals both in looks and performance, with the only real noticeable spec difference being a slightly lower output at 8mV instead of 9.5. Where things get really interesting is with the Impact cartridges. These share the same body design again, but in a cool transparent red finish. They've been created with the help of Toshi Nakama, who played a huge role in shaping the DJ tech industry as we know it today as the former president of Vestax. And with the impact, Gico is definitely not trying to recreate the sound of Shaw carts, they are going somewhere new entirely. It's designed with club performance in mind, 
And the main upshot of that is that the impact has a lot, and I mean a lot, of punchy low end. The kind you can really feel on a big system. With music like boom bap hip hop, drum and bass and reggae, the kind of stuff where bass is the focus, the impact does sound incredible. The payoff for that though is that you do lose a bit of crispness in the high end. It's not that it isn't there, it still is, but the voicing of the cart is so low end focused that it does make the overall tonal balance quite different. It also sounds like the high frequencies are being rolled off a touch, even if according to the frequency response they aren't. So I'm going to say that I don't personally think the impact is the best choice for DJs who are playing say disco or house where bass is important but super crisp hi-hats and transparent mids are also a priority. That kind of user will be better served with the J447 in my opinion. But what's interesting is that, of the current range of Autophon Concord carts, my favourite is the Digital, which also sounds a little more rolled off at the top compared to its stablemates. And that's because when I do play vinyl sets these days it's always with 45s, many of which are old and I found that sound profile to work really well for me. It camouflages surface noise in a very pleasing way. And so with the impacts I get a similar result, but with that extra punchy bass too, which can really bring more life to a lot of poorly pressed records. As I said, I've spent months now playing with these cartridges, and my conclusion is, given the choice between the J447 and the Impact, I'm going to plump for the Impact every time. The sound profile definitely isn't for everyone, but for 45 heads and lovers of bass music, it's just about the fattest thing you can get. Again, check the description for a chance to hear the sound for yourself. Before we talk price and wrap up, there's one thing I do want to note. Both of these cartridges and the Styli have the exact same physical design as the Shure 44s, and that's both a good and bad thing. It's good because they are familiar and it is a proven design dating back decades. But not everybody loved the original Shures, and there are a few reasons for that, all of which are carried over to the Gcos. The built-in stylus guard is great, for example, but as the suspension beds in on the carts over time, that does highlight just how far the cantilever sits away from the stylus body. It can be a lot, and I guarantee that 99% of long-term Shaw M44 users had at least one instance where they bent a stylus. In my case, it happened a number of times. There are other cartridge designs where the cantilever is more protected by the cart and stylus body. Plus, the blocky squared-off design can, especially if not weighted correctly, actually rub on the vinyl with a record which is especially warped. Concord-style designs tend to have more clearance in that kind of situation. None of this is new, as I say. It's how M44-style carts have always been. But it's just a word of warning to those who didn't like M44s in the first place. If you weren't a fan of their industrial design, you won't like these either. It does have me wondering what Gco could come up with if they started the whole design process from a blank page instead, and that's something I'd love to see one day. So finally then, let's get to pricing. Gco's distribution has improved greatly since I last talked about them. Mixware, one of the biggest distributors in the US DJ tech game, now supplies them stateside, so that means their products are much more accessible outside of Japan. But thanks to spiraling inflation and increases in materials and shipping prices, that hasn't made them any cheaper. A single J44A7 cart with stylus will set you back around $150 in the US, with the impact coming in a touch higher at $180. A pair of the nude styli to fit either type of cart will set you back around $170, although you can find them cheaper sometimes if you wait for sales. Now that does sound like a lot, especially if you were used to buying original Shores back in the day at much lower prices, but it's not actually outlandish at all in today's cartridge market. Equivalent Autophon Concord Mark IIs, the main competition for Gco, cost roughly the same. You will need head shells for the Gcos, which you won't do for Concords, but Gco now offer the J44 and the Impact pre-mounted to head shells if you don't have or want to source your own. I'm afraid that the simple fact is, DJ cartridges are a much more niche product than they were 15 to 20 years ago, and the economies of scale just aren't there in the way they used to be, so prices are simply higher across the board. But with this latest generation of Gco products, you really can feel the love and craftsmanship which has gone into them. From my perspective, they've transitioned from a hi-fi cart manufacturer, which also happened to make DJ Styli, to a company which has a real eye on what DJs need from their products and the skills to deliver it. And as someone who loves turntables and loves playing vinyl, that makes me very happy indeed. 
So there you go, my thoughts on the new generation of DJ carts from Geco in Japan. What really impresses me is how this company keep evolving this product, even though it remains tied to the original Shure M44 template, you know, they look identical, they are bringing new stuff to the table, like that nude stylus, for example, which I think is fantastic. It tracks really well, so cutting and scratching, it's on point. But also, from a durability and cue burn perspective, it's great there as well. I'm very happy using that on my Precious 45s. I've got no issues with excessive wear or anything like that. You do need to balance your carts properly, but that's the case always. So that impresses me, but also that new impact model, which I wasn't sure about at first. It took me a while to get my head around it. The sound signature is very different to the original M44s, and if that's what you're after, then you'll want to go for the J44 carts instead. But the impact is so warm in the low end and the lower mids, it does have a bit of a roll off in the top, but if you're playing hip hop and bassy music, or you're doing turntablism, or like me, you're playing crusty old 45s, then actually, I think that sound signature works very, very well indeed. They are not cheap. They are definitely premium priced cartridges at this point, but unfortunately cartridges have got more expensive across the board and I don't think that's unreasonable. Plus, you don't have to deal with importing them from Japan yourself these days because their distribution, certainly in the US, is way better than it was before. So overall, yes, these are a very solid recommend for me. I will continue to use them, continue to test them long term, and I'm excited to see what Gico come out with in the future as well. And in the comments this week, tell us about what carts and style you're using. Very simple. Are you still clinging on to your last pair of Shure M44s? Or have you moved over to Autophon VNLs? Or maybe you've moved to Concords or something different entirely? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching this episode of Beat Source Tech. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time.